Ahoy hoy and welcome to the channel. I'm Dr. Sumerian, not a real doctor, and today we are going to do a reading of an SCP I wrote like two days ago, just sort of on a whim, and uh, maybe afterwards I'll talk a little bit about the reasoning behind writing it and uh, what my thought processes were. So let's get started with the reading. Item number SCP-7342. Object Class Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-7342-1 and-2 are to be stored in the cryogenic foodstuffs section of Site-15. Consumption of SCP-7342-1 or-2 requires approval from the SCP-7342 project head after consultation with the on-site ethics committee liaison. Description: SCP-7342-1 is a box labeled Reese's Puffs. The box was constructed from an unidentified carbon fiber reinforced polymer composite. The box contains approximately 253 grams of organic material that appears visually similar, though distinct, to the breakfast cereal Reese's Puffs. Foundation agents first detected the anomaly on August 2nd, 2022, after a high-energy gamma-ray burst just outside the Earth's magnetosphere was observed by several astronomers. On August 25, 2022, the object was detected above the Earth's surface traveling along a parabolic arc that terminated in southeast Pennsylvania. It is unknown how the object physically survived the trip through space, the Earth's atmosphere, or the force of impact, which left a crater approximately 6 meters wide. Regardless, Foundation agents were able to recover SCP-7342-1 and place it in containment. The contents of the object were tested thoroughly and found to be potentially palatable by humans. A single test involving a D-class was performed. The following is a log of that test. Test SCP-7342-1-01 Location Site 15 Testing Chamber 45 Date August 27th, 2022 Personnel involved D-9304 and Dr. Fieri Testing parameters D-9304 is to eat several spoonfuls of SCP-7342-1 and answer Dr. Frieri's questions regarding any anomalies during the experience. D-9304 sits down at the table at the center of the chamber and picks up the spoon. D-9304 So, you just want me to eat this? Dr. Fieri answers from the other side of the protective glass for the intercom. Dr. Fieri Yes, and then tell us if anything odd happens. All right, um, sure. D-9304 solely scoops a spoonful of SCP-7342-1 into his mouth. Do you notice anything strange? I mean, it's dry cereal. Other than that. No? I've had Reese's Puffs before. Is this a joke? It is not. Please refrain from asking non-pertinent questions. All right. D-9304 continues to eat from the bowl, eventually finishing the small testing portion provided. Do you feel unusual? W wait should I feel unusual? I don't know. You're the test subject. I feel fine? A little hungry still. That wasn't much. You will be provided with lunch after the test. Oh, uh, alright. D-9304 experienced fairly severe digestive distress over the next 24 or so hours, but this reaction was not outside the realm of that expected from food poisoning. While SCP-7342-1 is not believed to have been spoiled, the composition does not appear to be fully compatible with human digestion. On August 2nd, 2023, an additional gamma-ray burst was detected outside Earth's magnetosphere. SCP-7342-2 was detected and a similar parabolic arc ending in southeast Pennsylvania was calculated. The object impacted in the same location as SCP-7342-1. This object was physically similar to the Dash-1 instance and contained a similar amount of material. The inside of the box, however, contained a message written in English using what appears to be black marker, but testing has not determined the writing's origin to any degree of certainty. Begin log. This box of Reese's Puffs was created in the year 42,412 A.D. by the species you come to refer to as the Glycian. We are a planet of four billion beings inhabiting Gliese 445-C. Ever since we discovered radio, we have been fascinated by the messages sent by your world. We spent decades decoding and unraveling the meaning of the signals you've sent across the cosmos. The first signal we decoded was an advertisement for breakfast cereals. The oddity of this has not been lost on us. But our ancestors, those who cut through the chaos and static, knew it held a deeper meaning. 
It is somewhat embarrassing that our first attempts were all chocolate or all peanut butter. There's nothing wrong with this, of course. The taste was wonderful. But the eventual combination of the two flavors led to a gustatory awakening on our world whose value can be scarcely overstated. In the end, of course, your signal ceased. We hoped that you were well, and we knew that when the time came we would thank you for your wonderful messages. When we visited your world, however, we found nothing but a wasteland. You had destroyed yourselves so long ago. And so, we bent the whole of our science and industry to the purpose of sending you a message. The power needed to transport even a small object back in time was immense, but our society knew it was important. The first object was a gift. The second is our message to you. I do not know if we can save you. I do not know if you can change what you one day may be. You are trying to survive through your time so that you may live into ours. I really hope that you do. Perhaps we can meet. Perhaps we can work together and build a greater future. Perhaps the grand promise of those first messages will eventually be fulfilled. But above all else, there is one thing you need to know. The journey of the human and the Glycian does not end here. We will accompany you, across all time and all worlds. We will delve into the cosmos, companions to the end. No matter what the destination, we go together like peanut butter and chocolate. End log. All right, so obviously this is supposed to be a little bit funny. Uh, the number is also sort of be a, a bit of a reference. So the original article is uh, 1342 to the makers of music. And I named this one, uh, it's 7342, and it's uh, to the makers of Reese's Puffs. It's a bit of a reimagining of an old article. There's a contest going on on the wiki right now where you're supposed to try and reimagine an old SCP article as something new. And this is what I came up with. Now, I will say, with regards to the article here, um, kind of came to me in a bit of a rush. I was in the, I don't know what I was doing in the morning, but I heard the stupid Reese's Puffs rap song. And I don't know why, but I looked up where it was from and it was, you know, this old uh, advertisement. I was like, wouldn't it be funny if an alien's only real uh like understanding of humanity wasn't the voyager record with its eloquence and like we're reaching out to the stars and hoping that someone will hear us and answer us back but instead was just like all of our television broadcasts and specifically like the first one they ever got was a reese's puffs commercial and i was like okay well what what if that was the case how would the how, how would the the story of 1342 change uh and here's what i came up with it actually turns out way better for the glycians in this uh, version of the story it's because apparently you know apparently the world destroy uh, in this my version of it the earth destroys itself instead of the other way around so yeah i just decided to com- i mean like, again this took me like an hour and a half roughly to write um a lot and a lot of that was just me researching stuff that no one will actually care about like um the original author of 1342 is a guy called flame shirt or at least that's the username uh so dr fieri if for americans you probably understand where this uh, reference is coming from is a sort of reference to flame shirt because guy fieri is known for wearing a shirt with flames on it um and also finding an image actually <laughs> Uh, I, I, there's a, there weren't many good images. I thought about like a box that actually says Reese's Puffs on it. But first of all, I I didn't know if I would be able to get something that looked appropriately alien. And more importantly, I was just like, there's a, you know, trademark issue of putting up a, an image that actually has a logo on it on the wiki. Um, and then I was looking through the bowls that they had. A lot of them had milk. A lot of them had, uh... Uh, spoons in with the bowls. The one that I found that didn't was a set of, uh, I guess, bat, supposedly bat-shaped Reese's Puffs. But then I thought, you know what? The aliens probably wouldn't make perfectly round Reese's Puffs. So what if that, what, you know, what if I just use this and be like, that's part of the anomaly that they didn't make them normal. And uh, yeah, I, I just remember like the idea coming in my head is just like, what if aliens only exposure to America, to uh, not American, to uh, human culture, and technically in this case, I mean American culture, but uh, to human culture was just uh, a Reese's Puffs ad. 
almost like and my, my original thought was like, what if that's the only thing they ever encountered? Just one Reese's Puffs ad. That's it. That's how they know. Could you imagine being like, like imagine being on Earth and having that happen with aliens? Like the only thing you encounter from an alien civilization, one single thing is a Reese's Puffs ad. And then I just wrote the story from that one ridiculous premise and went from there. I mean, it's not going to win the contest. I, I haven't even barely promoted this at all. Um, it's only a plus 37, and it's been more than 48 hours. And uh, I usually consider anything that doesn't hit 40 in at least uh, 24 hours to be a failure. But in 48 hours, this hasn't even hit 40. So, I mean, I consider it to be a failure by my own standards, but it was a weird posting day. I posted it up in like... 35 articles got posted in front of it within, I want to say, 12 hours. So it's not like, I guess I just got a little lost in the shuffle. It's fine. It's not fine. It annoys the shit. It not annoys the shit. I mean, it bothers the shit out of me. But, uh, I mean, what can you do? Sometimes they, sometimes they hit, sometimes they don't. I guess to the makers of music is like, it's well loved by a lot of people, but maybe it's not as well known as the, as the other half of it. Like, not, not as many, because I've gotten a few people being like, I've never even heard of the original SCP article, which is a crime. If you haven't read uh, 1342, you should. One of the SCPs that really got me onto the SCP wiki. Uh, I think without it, you probably wouldn't have any uh, Dr. Sumerian uh, content at all. Not on the wiki, not off the wiki. Anyway, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit the subscribe button, and then hit the notification bell next to that so you're notified when I upload new videos, and then head on over to patreon.com forward slash dsumerian and pledge at any level like everybody here on the screen already has, including Sinjariki, who is pledged at $100. It's nice to know that I'm not alone out here, and I will see you all again on, I want to say... Friday, maybe over the weekend, actually. I've got, I've got another thing coming out soon. So, uh, I'll see you then.